boom so man oh man oh man it has been a interesting summer uh for the most part man it it it, it has been a I would say it's been a while since I actually did a podcast uh, or updated this podcast. And so stuck in augmented reality, uh, I changed the name of it and I changed the direction of it in the middle of the pandemic, essentially, or like once the pandemic started. So back March or April, it was like March or April 2020. And so that was pretty much a, a year and a half ago. And honestly like as i'm reflecting back on it it that was probably one of the bad one of the better decisions that i've made uh during that time uh obviously some of the other decisions that i tried to make was i tried to learn break dancing i also tried to play more video games and i tried to do all these other things i tried to learn blender um i tried to do a whole bunch of different things but the one thing that really stood out was i saw that there was a a void in I wouldn't say rep yes representation in the emerging tech space particularly with AR and VR or just XR in general and I was like okay you know there's a bunch of people that I follow uh, you know there seems like a, a good sort of like influencer base that's international and you know uh, but there weren't any people of color there weren't any like black people uh, in particular and so as I was looking at, there's a lot of projects coming out. There's video games, new applications. Uh, Unity is picking up. Uh, Unreal starting to do more stuff. And I was just like, where's the black people at? You know, like, where's the black people at? And so as I was trying to learn Blender and I was trying to do these things, I also had this idea for a comic. And uh, during this journey, I, I started essentially live streaming more. And I was live streaming the just my process of just trying to learn Blender. So I just got a course off of Udemy and I was just recording myself, just watching it and and learning and hopefully just in a public platform, other people could learn as I was learning. And I thought just that level of transparency was valuable because you would often get that opportunity in school or you get that opportunity if you're working as like a, you know, a new person on a job. And so just, you know, a two, three hour stream of going through some courses and stuff like, and being out, out there like that, um, you know, it just, it was, it felt like it was a way to get connected. And so from there I was like, okay, live streaming is cool. What if I, you know, sort of share my insights as I, from the things that I learned on a podcast already had a podcast um but it was me just sort of just playing around just figuring out what the platform was so i had it for a couple years but i found that with this sort of open platform with the expertise that i had right like i've at this point i was an animator for seven years you know had a whole bunch of stuff in you know i had stuff in theaters had stuff on hbo hulu you know, I had some credits to my aim, right? And uh, even though it didn't feel like I was, you know, I like, you know, I'll have like a Wikipedia page or whatever, but like, it felt like I, I had some stuff to offer. And uh, when you start to lose things, like people were, like I was losing, or just like people in general during the pandemic, uh, not because people, things were being taken from you, but just the opportunities were not available. And when the opportunities are not available, you got to figure stuff out. And so I was like, you know, the, the feeling that I have about how I have stuff to offer, but I don't know what the opportunities are being able to share and sort of build a community to create opportunities. Um, that led me to this just idea of like, okay, you know, I see that there's a, there's a vision, there's a, there's a potential for uh, black creators in the AR space in particular, or just XR in general, there's a there's a space for for black creators, uh, and that space does have to be carved out and it has to be manifested. But there's an opportunity and there's a space to exist that you don't have to have you don't have to ask permission for. 
And with that, I, I sort of started to explore it before the pandemic with AR and with my, my webcomic that essentially my AR app that I was developing for my webcomic. And as I started to get closer to an answer of what that looked like for me, I started to see what it could look like for other people. And that became really, really interesting because I ended up having an opportunity to do an AR project for, um, for a few, for a magazine. And it was a black owned magazine. And I just had this vision of, of seeing like, what did it, what would AR look like from a unapologetically black perspective? And I sort of took on that project and, and developed it from the ground up just to manifest that vision for a client essentially that didn't even know what AR was. And so I think it was something that I was really fortunate to do, but that led me down this, ultimately led me down this path of really exploring the idea of how do you, how do you be innovative and also sort of propel the culture forward? How do you, create and pursue ideas without losing your identity. And I think that that's always something that black creators have to develop and manifest or, or reckon with, you know, I, I, I always think about like, you know, we know that we know the point or we know the album where, you know, we lost Kanye essentially, right? Like he, he became a Kardashian at some point and his music wasn't the same his his sort of outward expression wasn't the same like he, in many ways as a Kanye fan uh, I I feel like there became a point where he began to innovate and he also began to to lose his you know lose his identity as a as a black creator um, and he sort of took this helm as you know a mo I don't even say a mogul but just a creator He's, a, he's an artist, right? And I think that says, uh, for me, it, it says something that um, that I, I, you know, I have, di I have difficulty reckoning with. Um, partly because I have this sort of disdain and d despise for the Kardashians uh, because of a lot of glaring problematic things that they do. But it's it's that in order to in order to sort of grow and innovate as an as a black artist, you have to lose the black, and uh, and that part of that just the way it ends up, um, you know, it, it it rubs me the wrong way. And so I say all that to say that like I uh, set out on this journey, uh, and I ultimately said like okay, with this podcast and the things that I want to do with the podcast, I want to use this as a platform to to sort of explore my ideas and create a space for myself that allows people that allows me to be creative that I could control that is not going to get you know sort of that is not going to lose opportunities because of the pandemic and also grow as you know I start to grow as a developer and so in many ways it was just a personal diary for me that I'm able to share with people and, and be vulnerable in many ways right it was just like i'm not making money off of this and all this stuff but like I, I think that information and direction uh with technology that is often free is uh is very valuable right you could download a piece of software off the internet for free you don't have to pay for it uh with an asterisk right if you start making money you can pay for it but just out of the gate you did you don't have to pay for it and you have youtube university and you don't have to pay for that and you just had the time and so you're really paying with your time but you you know time is invaluable and valuable at the same time right and so with that it's just there's to get insights that you would often pay a consultant hundreds of thousands of dollars for um you know you could find that on a podcast or somebody could share that with you and build a community just to just to find support and for me i decided to myself I was like okay I want to be the the black AR guy not because I'm you know a black guy that does AR stuff 
but it was because there it says something for uh, for a black person to innovate and be an artist and be a creator and also be vulnerable and also be a thought leader and and so just exploring that dichotomy and sort of manifesting that within myself and putting it out there it, it's a it's something that I just I just wanted to see what would happen um, because you know health disparities exist all these different things that are happening especially now you know a lot of the a lot of a lot of sort of like black celebrities that you know we grew up on from aj johnson to dmx to you know michael k williams right like the people are you know things are happening and uh and it's black people that are sort of experiencing and in, in falling falling to these things and so it's like how do you how do you sort of balance that with you know black artists and creators that are you know sort of thinking about the future despite that looming reality that that future may be you know more contemporary than futuristic and so um so yeah you know it's 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 definitely been a journey it's definitely been a uh a fun-filled experience since i decided to be the black ar guy on uh, on on youtube and and make a podcast out of it um a lot of growth uh and it's crazy that it's been like well, I posted a podcast. The last time I updated this podcast or did an I did an episode was like in in March or not March but May, and I feel like that May was a a whole different life, like life for me than you know where I'm at now, and so uh, for those that have been keeping up with things. Uh, Obviously, you, you're probably seeing all the social, the courses and stuff that I that I'm posting on social media and stuff like that. Uh, but really, um, now I, I've sort of shifted not to a new direction, but uh, I feel like I've evolved in the direction that I that I set out to go on uh, back in March. And so the goal, like one of the goals, was just really as I learn, I want to share and essentially transmit information that I found and I've experienced to people just on the internet and be available in that capacity to hopefully inspire people to just take on that journey themselves, you know? And whether you're an artist yourself, a developer, uh, the goal was to just be a resource for people. Um, and just by just the way of I've been raised and the experiences that I've had just as a as you know a football player playing in you know division one college football um you know being an animator being a student um being a black person somebody that just like enjoys uh you know culture and community uh being a portlander like those things those things were all those things all matter to me and and they were influential on in, you know how i got to my point and and so it's like from there, right? You know, I, I I got invited to speak at the Wall Street Journal Future of Everything Festival. That was an amazing opportunity, uh, mainly because it was like I got to share, you know, the stage, albeit virtual, right? Like I got to share the stage and have, you know, a 20 minute pretty much like profile interview sort of experience where I got to share my work. Uh, with the wall street journal and that whole that whole platform and the crazy thing about it was like you know i the day that i went you know i went like a little bit after the the you know the former uh uh you know uh surgeon general uh of the united states and then right after me was paris hilton and it was just like what you know then gabrielle union went and wade wade like they went after and it was just like, like, what did I get myself into? Like, I'm over here just posting stuff on Twitter and making YouTube videos. And, you know, that's being able to see the impact of, of that stuff in that moment was, uh, was I mean, it was, a, it was definitely a humbling experience. Because, uh, you know, for those that are creators that, um, 
that sort of make YouTube videos or post stuff on social media and stuff like that. Because uh, mind you, I don't have a PR team. You know, I just I just come up with ideas. I have a great assistant and stuff like that. But like, I just I just come up with the ideas and I just try to share it with people. Um, you know, and and I just and it, it's it's fun to me. I mean, like this is what I know, right? And and so to see that, like, you know, people all the way in New York or all the way, you know, in India or some other place uh, is, is seeing that a value. I, I just thought that was, you know, that, that was just really, it, it just made me feel good. And for people that like, you know, know what it's like to be an athlete and to sort of try to find your identity after you finish playing football and, or like any sort of college sport, any sport, uh, professional sport that, that idea of identity and, and crisis and, and who are you like what what defines you now like this that was a moment where i really felt like my i wasn't defined by you know the stuff that i was able to do physically and it was actually just ideas that i came up with uh, and so my mind really manifested these opportunities and um and to just think that like that was just a byproduct of just an idea of i just wanted to create something that allowed me to express myself uh as a black person that loves technology and loves, you know, the idea of innovation, uh, it was, I just, it just felt, you know, like it mattered. And, um, and I think that goes beyond like any amount of money that like I possibly was trying to go after at that point. Um, albeit it did take a while, right? Like you, I, you know, from when I started May 2020 or March, 2020, to uh, the Wall Street Journal Feature of Everything Festival, which was uh, May 2021. I mean, like, there's a lot of time, and I there are many times where I was like, what the heck am I doing here? You know, I'm just making stuff and just putting it out. Uh, but to see that, you know, a, in a year, a little over a year, that stuff turned into something that I couldn't even have imagined, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, it's definitely humbling. And I think it's it's motivating me like it, it's just continued to motivate me to just see what else is possible because it's like if i if if this is possible you know no telling what else is possible right like it's crazy and so you know the future of everything festival happened and then as i was doing that i was also teaching at uh portland community college where i was building out a lot of the uh, immersive tech curriculum that they were doing so i was working with students I was sharing some of the stuff that I was sharing on podcast. I was actually sharing and teaching students about teaching AR comics classes. I got to connect with a lot of great people. It, it was great. And, and so from there, I got to I was teaching and um, and I, I'm still teaching. I'll be teaching a class um, in the wintertime, which would be cool. But I also de decided to develop a, a whole core curriculum. Uh, that is at the con at the intersections of, you know, uh, black identity, content creation, uh, just being an artist, being an activist, and uh, and being a technologist, and saying what does it look like to create innovative projects that allow you to build your portfolio, develop the skills that will prepare you for this XR revolution that will be coming. And also, you know, give you something cool that you can share with your friends, like, and be expressive about. And so uh, with it, because, you know, from my from my experience as a as a XR creator and AR creator, uh, the, the reason I continued to create and see what was possible was because I felt like out of all the years of me creating, like at this point, I've been uh, an artist for the past 10 years. Uh, out of all the years of me creating, when I got introduced to XR, it felt like I didn't need to compromise on the decisions of things I wanted to make. If I was creating, uh, if I was making a comic, I had to compromise with the fact that I couldn't animate in a comic form. I couldn't have sound effects. I couldn't have these crazy explosions uh, because they would all be still images. And I also had to determine if I wanted to have color printing, like, because color printing is freaking expensive. Like, it's really expensive. And so it's like, 
I had to do black and white pages because that's all I could afford. You could only have a certain page count. Uh, paper is only so big, and you could only you had to you could you had to choose what images you were going to draw. You couldn't draw all the images and have them play in front of people, right? And so when I created my AR comic and just demoed it out, I was able to record the voices. I had sound effects. I had animation in it. I had color, all those different things. And then on top of that, I could still have my like illustrated pages. And then I was just layering stuff on it. It just became this never ending thing. And, and to take things to the next level, I actually had interactions in it to where people could press buttons uh, on the page and, and, unlock different things from it and so i was like dude like this is crazy right like this is way better than a web comic this is way better than like it was crazy and so from there i just i just it, it just felt like there are so many limitless opportunity uh, possibilities and uh, i just wanted to explore all of them and as i found sort of a direction or possibilities and answers i just wanted to share those with people so that people saw the vision and saw what else you, what you could do with it and um, ultimately, it was just like, I want to explore it so that I can other, ex inspire other people to explore it and see what else they can come up with, you know, because I don't have all the answers. You know, I just like animation and explosions. Right. And I like cool music and I want to just make cool comics. Right. But there's other people that will have other grand ideas. And, you know, I just want to show people what is possible so that they can come up with their own ideas themselves. And, uh, and if they like comics, cool. If they come up with something else, even better, you know, because I want to be inspired too. You know, I, I don't want to just be running the show. I want to, you know, I want to sort of have a community so that I, I'd be like, oh man, they're doing something cool. I want to do that now. Like, boom, right? Like it, it's a healthy level of creativity and competition that, you know, only makes things better. And if black people are involved and black people are doing well with it, then even better, you know, because then we're always going to have a, things are always going to get um things are always going to you know feel safe and and helpful and and healthy for me to continue being a creator in the space and uh and i think that's really that's important to me and so from there i ended up making like 16 courses over over like the from january till you know june or whatever and those 16 courses span from making augmented reality playing cards to world building to uh social activism to making ar mazes making little ar picture frames and portals and essentially taking all the things that i was sort of quote unquote innovating or exploring with my comic and turning those into courses and uh, uh just really from the mindset of you know if i was able to make if i'm able to make something that people are willing to buy then yeah, you could buy it and that's great, but I'm really interested in making things that not only you're able to buy, but you're able to learn how to make. And then you can make stuff that other people can buy too. It really is just sort of like this community-based economy where you know, the value to me is not the products themselves, but what those products represent. Those products represent a gateway to a new way of thinking and a new skill level that will uh, continue to have more value in, right? Like me as an AR developer, and I am, I felt like I was able to make a living doing things that I didn't think were possible, or I didn't think uh, I could charge the amount of money for that I that I was able to do. And so the stuff that I was making for clients. In order to get those skills, you have to have a certain level of approach, and not a lot of people have that. So it just makes you really competitive in the job market. And so when you're working with clients that have budgets, and you're you're a good person to work with, people will pay you what you are worth. And me getting a glimpse of that as a black creator that doesn't have hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff like that. And to say like, okay, the stuff that I do has value and people see that and people will support you in that so that you're not trying to pinch pennies together to get top ramen noodles during a pandemic. Like that mess is, it, it, you know, it, it, it was something I was like, man, you know, other creators need to uh, experience this and other creators, you know, can take things that they've been working on and they could shift it just with, 
you know, just adding a new adding a new thing to it, just adding technology to it. I mean, we all use our phones and we all use this, you know, use our devices. And so how do you utilize those devices to help you uh, go down this pathway of, of, of being a successful creator that inspires people? And uh, then you just pay it for it. I mean, like that, that's been that's been an interesting thing for me. And so, like, as I sort of like finished all this stuff, right? And then obviously, like the the looming thing that is always a shocker for people is I got into medical school, and you know I started medical school probably like a month and a half ago, uh, almost two months ago. Yeah, I started medical school like almost two months ago, and uh, and that's been a very humbling experience too. Um, as I like, you know. Started medical school. It also meant I had to move from Portland to Reno, and so uh, and so having to leave Portland and sort of this community that I've built uh, to go to to move to Reno, a place that I've never lived at. I've been a couple a couple of times, but like moving to a new state and stuff, it, it, it's definitely. I mean, Reno is definitely not Portland, and with all the fires and everything, I was definitely feeling all that stuff because I was moving closer to fires. Um, I was also moving closer to my family. And so instead of being a nine hour drive away, I was a two and a half hour drive away. So I, you know, I, I guess I definitely appreciate that. But being in medical school, it's a it's a whole another beast. It going from emerging tech and being an entrepreneur and sort of dealing with, you know, rebounding and trying to figure out COVID to teaching to doing the Wall Street Journal thing, then to starting medical school. It's like each one of those things has been a, a an adjustment that you have to adapt to. Um, medical school has been this adjustment that I'm still trying to adapt to like two months later. I'm still trying to adapt to day one. You know, like I feel like day one is just getting longer and longer and longer. I'm like, dang, like what is going on here? Uh, cause it's just a, it's just a whole, it's just a different way of like education and school and stuff. And so it, it obviously is really time consuming and it, it has made me not question my decisions for other things, but it's made me, uh, see where my convictions lie with, um, my interest as a creator and my interest as being an academic and also my interest in being, in many ways, uh, somebody that wants to continue inspiring and, and pushing myself. Because the, the looming thing about it is when you look at all the stuff that I've sort of put out, it doesn't necessarily say medical school, but then, I mean, the fact is that like I'm in medical school. And so it's like, how do I balance the my interest in, of wanting to be a physician with my interest of continuing to be a an artist and and, a, and I guess a you know a thought leader inf, like many influencer influencer dude uh, the black AR guy how do I continue to be the black AR guy and be a medical a medical student uh, in, during a pandemic with all these different things and it's been it's been a journey partly because. I'm like the only artist in my class of 70, uh, but I'm also one of four black students in a class of 70. And I, I feel that, I, I mean, I feel that a lot, um, mainly because when we're talking about health disparities, you instantly start to think about, you know, Black Lives Matter and, you know, how black people are disproportionately being affected by COVID compared to other populations. And you talk about, you know, sort of the Tuskegee syphilis experiments and, you know, uh, healthcare hesitancy and all that stuff. And then you look around and you see that, you know, you're like the only person in the room that represents that, that population. And you also rep you also realize that in the state you're you know you're the only you're one of the only people that actually had that opportunity to to be a representative for that and it and it comes with a layer of responsibility that it in in some ways it, it's
you know, it it can be debilitating sometimes where you, you get stuck. You're like, oh crap, I have to I have to do right by my people by doing well and I can't mess up. I can't do these things. And and so in many ways, you know, being the black AR guy, uh, you know, sometimes feels like it's a distraction from the stuff that I'm trying to do for the, the people that I care about. And that's a, it's just a dynamic that I'm, you know, I guess I'm just kind of just trying to work with because, uh, because I, the reason I got into, I decided to go into XR is to represent and to inspire and to, to help people. And the reason I got into, oh, decided to go to medical school was because I wanted to inspire and, you know, bring hope, heal people and help people. You know, there's a lot of overlap with those things. And I want to teach people, right? And I could and I'm, I could do that as a developer um, and an educator, and I could do that as a physician. And so when people say like, oh, yeah, I didn't see, I don't see how those two sort of overlap. It's like, for me, it's like, that, that's just a, it's just another, you know, it's another pathway for the same things that I continue to want to do. It's, uh, to me, it's, you know, I like playing video games. And I like science and I like comics and I like art and entertainment. And I also like, you know, helping people and giving people information that they need to live healthier lives. Right. Like I was a personal trainer. I was a STEM tutor and I was a comic book illustrator all at the same time. And so why can't I do, why can't I do both? You know, uh, why can't I do both? You know, why can't I do all of it? And and so the thing, I guess the thing is, you know, like, how do I continue to do both uh, with the expectations that come with, you know, obviously medical school, right? Like medical school is sort of like a full time job. Plus, you got to study 10 to 12 hours a day. Right. And so uh, and that stuff, in order for me to get to the level that I was at in a short amount of time as an AR developer, um, I was put I was waking up at 6 a.m. and I was you know, finishing up at 11 p.m., you know, so I was putting in the time. And so then it's just a matter of just, you know, having that focus. And uh, and so just finding ways to balance it out. It, it's it's going to be a journey. And that's something that, like, I, to balance the stress out, I, I think that's just something I'll just continue to just speak about because I don't know if there are any black AR developers that are in medical school <laughs> you know like I don't know if they're I don't know if there's a community of people that actually like know exactly what it's like to do to be an emerging tech and own a company and and sort of innovate in these ways and then also are trying to learn foundations of you know being a physician and and being influential in healthcare or being a participant in in healthcare you know, I just don't know if that, those things are there. And like the funny part about it is like when I tell people like, oh yeah, I'm an AR developer and all that stuff and I'm going and getting ready to start medical school. They're like, why are you doing that? You know, you can make more money in XR. It's like, well, if I was going after the money, I mean, I probably would be doing a whole bunch of other stuff too. Like it's, you know, it's, I'm, I just took out, I just took out a hundred thousand dollars in debt just to go to medical school. And that's just a start, you know, and uh, and I'm devoting what probably the next 10 years of my life, like to working in hospitals and uh, and learning how to how to care for people. Uh, I think that there's a level of humility and, and honor that comes with that. And, you know, if I could find ways to incorporate my XR stuff, you know, into things that are. Uh, that make people's lives better in those situations where they're the most vulnerable. I think that's a that's a privilege that I get to explore, um, that no others don't get to explore. And so um, for me, it's like, huh, I'm always wondering like not whether I should do it, but like what does it look like for this to actually just be a thing, you know? Like what does it look like for somebody to come into an office and as they're getting treatment, they get to go on a journey of what that treatment looks like through AR, VR, or just XR in general. What if they get, you know, what be what if before 
uh, somebody's surgery, they can download an app and and see what the see what that procedure actually looks like, and and see how the procedure works from through animation and AR right in your living room, right? Like, what if it was a what if you get to explore your body and you get to learn more about yourself um, through this experience that uh, can often be traumatizing, um, you know, because we're seeing what COVID is that we're learning more about the inst- the institution of healthcare, and we're learning more about how the body works through trying to get over COVID. You know, at the end of, at the end of this, like more people will know about virology because of COVID than any moment in their life you know they're learning more about science than they ever did in school and and i think because of this because of these experiences uh these experiences become very uh influential experiences in our lives and i think that it's an opportunity that we can really really play on right and so we'll see how it goes i have have this i have this because of medical school, we have presentations all the time and stuff like that. So uh, my next presentation is I want to try to see what it looks like to have an AR presentation uh, in medical school. And, and hopefully I'll, I'll, live to, uh, I'll live to show what, the, what happens with that. So um, definitely stay tuned on that one. But, you know, from there, it's just like, yeah, I, I made a whole bunch of courses. Uh, those are available. So tap in and obviously like support your boy because I, I i could i could use uh i could use the funds to to pay for all these you know medical school bills at this point um but those stuff are available and you know i'm just glad to just have stuff out there because i i didn't see that stuff when i got into it and so i wanted to change that by by creating pathways for people to to explore because i don't know if you know but some of these some of these intro to ar things they'll be like oh yeah this is really easy to get into and then they just start talking some nonsense like straight out the gate and you'd be like i can't keep up i wanted to make some cool stuff but i can't make cool stuff if i gotta follow that because i can't it just doesn't work for me it's inaccessible and that's how i felt um and i just sort of muscled through it but i was like ah this is something that i could change i could make it a lot easier and i could uh make it a lot more accessible and I just, I mean, I just spent the time doing it and I just put it out there to share. Um, and so if, if people, people, you know, have told me just based off of Skillshare stuff and just reaching out to me that they appreciate it. And I, you know, that, that just makes it, it, it makes, it makes it all worth it. Um, Cause it's like it, you know, if, if it was up to me, you know, I, I would just do this all day and and i was you know at some point but you know obviously obligations and stuff like that uh but yeah i did it just it just it feels like uh the stuff that I, i've been able to do has has helped people and uh and that makes me feel good and so because of all that stuff right obviously you know like people know that like i'm big on unity uh unity has using unity has definitely changed uh my life in a in a good way i was part of the um you know unity for humanity summit i uh i've done some stuff with unity um and i like do a lot of ar development uh using unity um and so they gave me the opportunity to um become a unity certified instructor and so uh because of all the stuff that i've been doing and and that that was really uh, that was a real, that was a great journey to go on. Uh, pretty much did all that stuff before I started medical school. So pretty much into June, mid June to like mid July, I spent pretty much a month uh, studying for the Unity certification test as a 3D artist, and ended up passing that. And because I'm already a college instructor with the certification. And features and stuff like that, right? By this time, I was already already did the Wall Street Journal thing. Um, they presented me with the opportunity to be a, a Unity certified instructor, and so now I'm a Unity certified 3D artist and a certified instructor. And uh, and I got to um, and I, I definitely learned a whole lot more about you know the powers of the platform just by getting the instru- the certification or studying for that test. 
I definitely feel a whole lot better about lighting. Oh my gosh, like a lot of a lot of my old projects, they they were not optimized, and now I know exactly what to do to fix those things. Um, but it uh, with uh, the reason I ended up like going down this path was because I ended up talking to the uh, the VP of of Unity. And we were talking and she was like, hey, you know, I hear you're starting medical school and you're doing all these things. Like, how is this working? I was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to, you know, find ways to to pay for medical school. And she was like, well, you know, to be honest with you, like there may be we have a like this certified instructor program that you may be interested in if you want that can help you, uh, you know, help you, you know, pay for some of that stuff by utilizing the, the, the knowledge that you have. And so, you know, if you get certified, I mean, like throughout medical school, you could take on different projects for clients and, and make a pretty decent amount of money um, and get Unity support uh, for some stuff to, to help with it. Cause we appreciate the things that you're doing and we just think it's just really cool. So I was like, Oh snap. I didn't even know that was possible, but I'll take it. This is great. Like, you know, VP of Unity, a freaking, you know, billion dollar company, it's, you know, that I, it's like, it's like saying that, you know, the VP of Microsoft is like, hey, how about you like, you know, if you want to do some stuff with us and, you know, you could pay for things. It's like, yes, we'll definitely do that. It's like, what? It's crazy. And so, um, and so yeah, it's just been a, it's just been a very interesting year and a half uh, and a, really a, a really interesting uh, past six months since I like made an update because certified instructor doing that I, I worked on a a uh, nft project right after i got my certification i got a mocap suit and so i was uh i worked on this project called uh, uh aku um aku's world uh which is has been blowing up on within the nft space and so i uh, got to do that got to do a lot of animation stuff using unity so like as an instructor i was helping people out troubleshooting stuff with unity and all that and then um i got invited to to speak at the augmented world expo uh about the you know the stuff that i was doing for uh, with my sort of like portland experiment with the george floyd thing and how i created the courses and you know got grants for it and all that stuff it, it's it's been just a really interesting it's been a really interesting journey from where i started to how i got here now and you know with all the stresses of medical school and moving and trying to figure out how to pay bills and you know figuring out what i'm doing uh this is something that you know i'm, I'm very fortunate of of being in this position to to speak about it um i think i'm you know one i want to have i want to see more black people in the space but i just want to see more people inspired uh to think that they can create something out of nothing and, and have an impact on people's lives uh, that doesn't have to be sports related or that doesn't have to be, you know, focused on going viral. You know, it's, it's, it's just all about, you know, sharing and uh, sharing and, and pushing people to be uh, to use the things around them to to be better and and create a better world and so with that it, it's a uh, like one of the things that I, i'm going to i'm going to start doing more is uh one being more consistent and so i feel like i'll be having you know i'll be one week i'll drop freaking 16 videos or 16 podcasts the the next week i'll or the next like six months i'll drop nothing you know and and so what i've been told because you know i have a therapist and you know, going to therapy and all that stuff is great for your mental health and, and it, it's something that should be normalized. Uh, but what my therapist has been telling me is that, you know, going through medical school is, is a very, uh, it's, a, it's a hard and difficult process. And uh, it's difficult because it's meant to be difficult. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But with that, you have to take care of yourself. And for you as a creator, it was like you have to create and so even if i don't have 20 hours to work on a project i have an hour or so out of my day uh, out of my week that i could reflect on projects and i could reflect on and, and share stuff that i've learned 
And so with this project or with this podcast, because it, it's gone beyond just a project with this platform, um, I want to continue building it because, you know, as people get more and more involved with my work or introduced to my work, I'm going to get more features, going to get more, you know, sort of speaking engagements and stuff like that, just in the position that I'm in now. And for that, I, I think it's uh, I owe it to people that have uh that have invested time and, and energy into my journey to continue finding ways to inspire them that uh, that's a little more consistent. And so for me, this will continue to be my creative outlet. Uh, I, I need a creative outlet. This will be my creative outlet that I'll continue to sort of build on. But it, it'll be, I wouldn't even say like more structured. I, I, I just think it'll be, um, I just want to continue it. And, uh, and so for that, you know, if you have any props, any sort of ideas or questions, you know, obviously hit me up on all the social nets and all that stuff, uh, and and just ask it to me, and and those it'll give me ideas and things to talk about every week, uh, whether it's my new projects that I'm working on, current projects, uh, ideas that I see going, things that happen, right? Like Facebook just released their new. AR glasses that they were talking about and Snapchat has their new AR glasses. Um, what does that, you know, what would that stuff look like? Uh, what is that stuff going to look like? How would you use that stuff? Like, what are my thoughts on it? You know, like how would I incorporate that into like my work to inspire others to utilize that in their work? Um, I did a, like a COVID AR project with, uh, with using Facebook's uh, Spark AR. And so I made a whole bunch of filters for a nonprofit called uh, Self Self Enhancement Incorporated, and um, and it was great. I mean, you know, I got to work with some great people. Got to um, explore, you know, areas of public health using the arts. Uh, me as a medical student being able to promote, you know, essentially vaccinations and why you should why you should you know, take care of yourself during COVID and what is actually happening and how you could actually understand these things better through through the arts and comics and AR um, and music and all that stuff. It, I think it was just a good opportunity to create uh, something like that. And and so that I'll, I'll definitely be talking about that more and, you know, just diving deep into what that was later on as I uh, as things continue to slow down. And then ultimately, uh just creating an environment that uh, people were at least creating a resource for people to go to and have it access to on YouTube or whatever that that just really feels um, you know feels inspiring uh, inspiring not because you know you go to this and you learn how to make something right but inspiring in terms of like what does it look like to just be unapologetic about, you know, just who you are and then also explore these sort of whimsical random ideas that may be worth a hundred thousand dollars in the next five, 10 years, you know? And, and, and I would say like, the reason I say that isn't because of like, Oh yeah, you're doing this because you're going to make a lot of money and you're investing in it. It's because, you know, we live in a capitalistic society and if something is worth that much money in society, it's very, very valuable and people will treat it with the value and the respect that it deserves. And often as a black guy, because I can speak as a black creator and an artist, um, you often don't know what the value is of the things that you do. And often there are people that tell you that it doesn't have value. And so to be able to do things that have such a high value in society, it encourages you to want to do more of that. And so, you know, we sort of see these waves of, you know, oh, we need to get more people into coding and all these different things, right? Well, yeah, we need to get more people into developing because technology is the future. But that doesn't mean that you need to deviate from the arts. That doesn't mean you need to deviate away from culture. It doesn't mean you need to deviate away from the things that you're currently doing. 
You just need to progress with the technology as the technology matures. So will you. And so everybody that, you know, used to play just traditional instruments, at some point they started playing electric instruments and they started learning how to produce and they started learning how to do videos because that's the technology is more accessible when it progressed, right? You know, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Soulja Boy and we wouldn't have freaking Chance the Rapper. We wouldn't have Kanye West. We wouldn't have all these influential artists like I, you know, I was watching, I was li listening to The Breakfast Club with uh, Kehlani. You know, during the pandemic, she was like, crap, I'm getting ready to drop a, I'm getting ready to drop an album and I need to do videos and it's a pandemic. So I'm going to just get some cameras and watch some YouTube videos and, and learn the technology as an artist so that I could, uh, so I could do my art and make it better and make it accessible. And, uh, and that, that's pretty much what it is, right? Like, you know, I was fortunate enough to sort of grow up in the, in the golden age of, of SoundCloud artists. You know, I was on SoundCloud before Spotify, there was SoundCloud. That's where you saw all the gems, right? Like that's where you saw all the gems. And now those people that, you know, Lil Uzi Vert, right? Like the whole trap, you know, trap, you know, hip hop trap era, like electronic trap, like all that stuff was on SoundCloud. Now it's sort of, you know, heavy hitters that are the sound, you know, the soundtracks for all the famous TikToks, right? Like it's it's like technology is is so much a part of us that as we as we accept it and, and integrate it into the things that we do it's supposed to make things better um but often the barrier of entry to 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 control or you know incorporate technology is, has always been very very high but now it's a lot more accessible and i just want to inspire people to take advantage of how accessible it is and how free it is you know, you just need a computer. At this point, we all got computers. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to participate in society. And so as we continue to do that, it's, uh, you know, we want to, I just want to inspire people to continue, continue pushing that envelope. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's interesting. And uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is, uh, is trying to like do more prompts and be at least address sort of a, a a looming questioner concern of things that I just sort of see, and I have people um, mainly just my assistant, I have my assistant sort of like helping me uh, come up with different prompts and stuff for each episode uh, to to give people just things to start thinking about and just stuff to talk to. Uh, and one of the things is that we're sort of coming up with is just the idea of just what does it look like to just like build your own world and not like you know a story but just sort of we all sort of have our own perspectives how can we uh in our worldview sort of centered around our perspectives and our experiences and uh, often you feel like you don't have a lot of agency with it right and so with uh, one of the courses that i have uh which is essentially intro to world building um it's really focused on being able to create something that you have an input in or being able to have something that you have input in. And so uh, one of the prompts that, uh, you know, my assistant came up with is, you know, and just end up reading it, um, is that many people have an idea of what they expect from the government during this crisis versus what we actually receive. And, you know, what if we could virtually build worlds that show examples of how we could better our countries uh, during this time. And, you know, talking about pandemics or just whatever it is, like there's always stuff happening, right? There's always bad stuff happening. Um, uh, a world where the characters don't have to pay for the necessities they need to live. Uh, a world where black people have their own form of policing that doesn't end in assault or murder. A world where the earth isn't deprived of its natural resources solely for the purpose of making money. Um, you know, what would our alternate reality be under this new circumstance? And I think that, like, I one shout out to her for, you know, sort of coming up with this 
uh, and presenting it, and presenting it to me so I could like speak about it, right? But um, but this is really a, a, a core foundation of like why people know the work that I uh, that I created. I was in Portland and I was in Portland like five blocks away from all the stuff that was being caught up on the news, right? You know, when, you know, Proud Boys were shooting and running over people and getting shot. Uh, that's that's right. That's in my neighborhood. That was right down the street from me. Um, and then also when, uh, you know, the feds were coming and people getting shot up, people were getting tear gas for 100 days. Like those were all people I, I know and um, and I, I work with and I try to like be involved in the community with. Um, you know, this, 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 this is my people, right? And seeing how, you know, Portland has in some ways really weirdly like became this epicenter. And also, you know, the, the pandemic was happening. One of the things I wanted to do was see, I saw a potential, an unrelated potential, because, and, and as I think about it, it was really uncharacteristic of me to use AR in this way, um, because I cared more about image tracking which is sort of like you, like the paper is really the, the core foundational piece of the AR experience. And I went into ground plane, like world building, like world space, uh, I guess ground, ground plane uh, AR tracking. And, you know, what that, what I was doing is I was, I was saying like, what does it look like to uh, have a space where you can put things that pertain to black people in a space that's not going to get vandalized it's not going to get overly policed you could be black in the in society and not have to worry about freaking racists and and proud boys and all those people trying to mess it up you know like they the the thing that i have always found just so insincere was that you know People will have no problem putting up racist monuments and then trying to ruin your livelihood for trying to speak out and do something about just the the very nature of having a Confederate monument right in front of your house, especially as a black person. That pays taxes. But then have the audacity to deface, destroy fine you for trying to put up and honor people that fell victims to the oppressive society that we are supposed to be past right like we have a we had a black president so now racism is over and so now anything that comes after it that's oppressive uh isn't really that bad because you know we got Obama be grateful and I just saw I was like man you know what does it look like to create a space control a space do things at such a large scale right put a skyscraper just with the you know Put a skyscraper that's just focused on just blackness in the middle of Times Square, like anywhere. Like you just do that. And you have a photo op for it. You just start flexing, right? Like you just, you have like a whole bunch of stuff you could just share with the world. Because we all, because of the pandemic, literally like there was a whole movement that was started because of a YouTube, a YouTube video and some pictures literally it was a video and some pictures that 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 did all this stuff there's only so many people that actually saw what happened like and so for me as an animator whose career is built on just making pictures and making videos i saw the power of that and not only just making pictures and making videos but just making pictures and making videos and then just posting it on social media that's literally how all this stuff started and so I was like, what does it look like to, to do that, to empower people, not to shine light on what's oppressing people, 
but to empower people to continue doing the same thing, right? Like I, I think the the beauty of the world that we live in and uh, the Black Lives Matter movement just as a core idea is that black people have always been saying the same things, right? And, you know, we could you look at an example of, you know, Colin Kaepernick and, you know, the, just the many people, the many athletes, the many people that have, have said things and have their livelihoods taken away from them uh, as a punishment for, uh, for the things that they had to say about experiences that people were having. And I will say taken away because um, their livelihoods were changed because they decided to, to do something about something that, uh, that has plagued black and brown people, particularly black people for uh, since the ages, right? And so using a platform, how dare they use a platform that they worked hard for to gain and, and have access to, to, um, to say how they feel about certain things, right? And I won't go down the, the sort of convoluted pathway of, you know, okay, well, they let domestic abuse and all that stuff. It's like, yes, I mean, it, it, yes, it's a byproduct of American society. And we could talk about how, you know, there's a lot of social determinants that, that lead people to do certain things in particular demographics and, and how that's promoted, yes. That is a, a problem, but a conversation for something else. Um, but using a platform or developing a platform and then uh, to empower people to create a world where they're able to express themselves and then share it and, and be very proud of it, right? Like I mentioned, like putting a, a, a Black Panther as skyscraper in the middle of Times Square and then taking a picture to flex on people. Like that is a level of pride that um that incorporates culture in a very authentic way that you can't you you can't package and you can't sell as a as a cons you can't sell as a business to business solution you the only way you could achieve that is if you empower people to explore an idea and, and build a community around that idea that empowers other people to participate in that. And so this whole idea of what, it, what would it look like to build a world and create access points that allow black communities and black people to, uh, to have opportunities to police themselves and, and manifest a world where they're not being assaulted when they're supposed to be protected and served, uh, and they're also able to exist in, uh, and be unapologi unapologetic in their existence. That stuff is really the stuff that I started to explore. I try, I, you know, I try, started to combine a little bit of the, you know, the comics and the entertainment part in it, but it's really that idea of what is it like to be unapologetically black and use technology to be even more unapologetic about it. And, you know, world building and knowing these skills, you know, using Unity, building an app, putting it on the app store, making a promo video about it, making a whole bunch of cool pictures, posting that on social media, getting people to try to download that app. And then, then they do their own stuff too. I mean, that's how TikTok blew up. Like that was the very nature of TikTok. Black people started doing cool stuff on it. And then now everybody wanted to do it. You know, it's just that, they didn't own the platform and they would get shadow banned and all that stuff. But now what does it look like for black people to make their own stuff without having to know how to build an app? They just have the idea and they know how to use the tools and then they, they're putting stuff out there and, and other people are, are participating in it, right? If there's a lot more black people doing that, getting on app stores and building world access points to worlds that, that speak to them and speak to the people like them, then that changes the whole market. I mean, at that point, you know, Apple may end up changing their whole freaking app store model because more black people were on there. 
you know, that's pretty much how things change, right? You know, uh, I always think about this joke of how do you get, how do you get, how do you get stricter gun control? Well, you give black people guns. That, that, that's, that's how it is. And if you don't believe me, just look at all the stuff that happened once the Black Panthers started rolling up with shotguns. You know, they were legal gun owners. They had guns. They couldn't take them away. They just overregulate them then. And so it's like, you know, what would it look like? How will app stores change if more there are more black people on that had apps? How would the whole landscape change if black people knew how to were making more apps and they were getting more getting going more app stores? You know, imagine having a whole page on your on your iPhone of just apps that black people made. Like that, that's what would that even look like? I bet you right now, like you probably wouldn't be able to find. You probably wouldn't be able to fill up a whole page on your uh, on your iPhone uh just with black apps from black people like that would just be crazy and then what would it look like to have a whole page full of apps that were black ar apps or black vr apps black xr apps where each one is a as a new portal to a a, a an immersive black experience because obviously, you know, black people aren't a monolith, right? And so like, what does it look like to have all these little portals on your phone, in your pocket, that you walk around with, that you could jump into a new black world, you know, Afrofuturistic world, created by black people, for people to experience, to expose them to new ways of culture and new ways of thinking, new experiences. I mean, you could do that now. I mean, you, they could all be created. And so, you know, for me, making courses and stuff to uh, give people an entry point to even just think that that is remotely possible. Um, you know, I just real, I felt, I just feel very fortunate to just have the opportunity to find support to do that. And so now it's like, now that these courses are out, now that things are available, um, now it's just a matter of, you know, planting seeds and giving people opportunities to say, okay, now here's, here's this thing that you have. You could use this to make this, 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 and this. Which one do you want to make first? Not what are you going to make, but which thing are you going to make first? And that, and that is, I think that's really empowering because it puts, it puts the decision in your hands of, I have so many opportunities and so many possibilities that all have a positive side. It's all on me to just see what is it that I would like to try first, you know, and to just sort of see that as a possibility is just, it's not something that I felt I've had in my 30 years of life. It's at least in, uh, on a consistent basis. And I think just being able to provide that for people, uh, a pathway for free. I mean, like, all this stuff is for free. I mean, you obviously have to, like, um, you know, rent the course or whatever, or you just get, like, a Skillshare account. Uh, but really, it's just your time, you know? Like, it's just your time. And so it's your time, your energy, and your dedication. It's, it's not, it's not, you're not going to learn it overnight, but in this space things are changing so much that like new things will come out and you'll just have to add that to the repertoire of things that are possible and so going from a, a snapchat face filter to a spark ar lens or instagram lens to uh building your own app to you know working with clients like it all starts from this basic level of interest and a vision that you would often just have to work with and so you know got a whole bunch of prompts that i you know i hope to explore and and ideas that i want to try out uh but again i just really appreciate everybody up until this point that have been really focused on uh or just invested in me um you know so if you're interested obviously tap in with the patreon uh 
you know, patreon.com slash Iltopia. Uh, tap in with Iltopia Studios, shop.iltopia.com. Uh, tap in with all the, the courses and stuff that I have. And you can find that at uh, stuckoinisland.com slash courses. Uh, follow Stucco and Island, obviously, uh, where I'm posting things. Uh, follow the YouTube channel. You know, just, yeah, just follow me on everything. You know, just, you can't go wrong with just following me on everything. That's where you'll find everything. Everything going on all the platforms. And so uh, with that, you know, it's it's been a while since I, I, I made a podcast. And so I hope to continue making more of these just because it's fun I really enjoy this it's a it's an opportunity to just continue inspiring people that goes beyond just sort of making a whole bunch of making a whole bunch of projects at some point you just kind of need to unpack the projects and be reflective on them and as I'm getting all these new speaking engagements I'm seeing just the power uh, of just being able to reflect on the things that I've done uh, to add to it. And so with that, you know, this is, uh, I guess this is episode one of the new season of the Stucky and Augmented Reality Podcast. Uh, this is the first of many of me as a Unity Certified Instructor, a uh, the Black AR guy, that's also in medical school now um as a business owner somebody that you know is working on a patent for a new device um you know just a educator and yeah it's just you know i really appreciate everybody for sticking with me and i hope to see you next week so with that we out <laughs>